Hello guys, welcome to another video in the series of coding. Today we are going to do a problem which is called flip. Uh, let's try to see the problem. So we are given a binary string A and that has some given characters which are all 0 and 1. Now we can flip some characters and by flipping we mean change character 0 to 1 and vice versa. So perform at most one operation such that the final string numbers of 1s is maximized. Let's try to understand this problem. Okay, let's say we have some string like this okay let's say something like this okay now in this case we want to find total how many flips we should do such that you know what part we should flip such that we get maximum number of ones okay for example we can flip only let's say we flip this part then this part this zero will become one this one will become zero and our final string will become equal to this okay but will it give the maximum number of ones right so the number of ones are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Can we achieve some other better string than this? Maybe we try to flip some other portion. Let's say we flip this entire portion. So we get ones here. Right. So then what is our total answer? Our answer in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 ones. Right. This is better than the previous string that we were trying to flip. Okay. Can we achieve even better answer or not? How do we decide how to solve this question? Okay. So let's try to observe that. We know if we flip a 0, we convert it to 1 and we get a 1. That is what we want. We want most number of 1s. So we need to convert a 0 to 1. So every time we convert a 0 to 1, we are getting 1, 1 extra, right? If we switch this 0 to 1, we are getting an extra 1, right? If we switch a 1 to 0, then it's like losing a 1. Because let's say we convert this, this portion alone, right? If you convert this 1 to 0, if you convert this 0 to 1, you have gained 1, 1, but you have lost 1, 1, right? So overall, in this case, you are, you are gaining a 1, but you are losing a 1, okay? So this is the situation. Whenever you flip a 0, you are gaining a 1, right? Because 0 is getting converted to 1. Whenever you are switching a 1, to 0 whenever you are flipping a 1 to 0 you are losing a 1 right so it is minus 1 okay so now let's try to convert this array so every time we get a 1 we'll make it plus 1 uh, sorry every time we get a 0 we'll make it plus 1 every time we get a 1 we'll make it minus 1 because switching a 1 is 0 and switching a 0 is 1 okay so simple logic every time we see a 0 we do plus 1 every time we see a 1 we do minus 1 okay so let me rearrange my array like this okay now this is my array now in this array i want to find out what how to process it right such that i get maximum sum because i want maximum ones so this problem basically reduces to the same problem as maximum sum sub array problem okay you want to find out the maximum sum in this given array now what is the maximum sum subarray problem? So it's a, um, you know, a very important problem. And it is a simple algorithm. We'll see the algorithm, right? Maximum sum uh, subarray problem, which can be solved using an algorithm, which is called Cadanese algorithm. So let's quickly see Cadanese algorithm and then come back to this problem. It will help us to solve the problem. Let's say we have an array. Let's say simply 1, 2, 3, 4. We want to find out the maximum sum in this. How can we find out the maximum sum in this? So, first of all, what are the subarrays possible, right? This is a subarray. Then this is a subarray. This entire thing is a subarray. Which is the maximum sum subarray, right? In this given example, which is the maximum sum subarray? If you have 1, 2, 3, 4, taking entire 1, 2, 3, 4 will give you maximum sum because everything is positive. So, if everything is positive, then adding all the elements will give you maximum sum subarray. Now the problem comes when you have some negative element. Let's say you have something like this. Now what is the maximum sum subarray that you can get? In this case, if you take all the elements, right, you will be getting a sum of 3 minus 2 plus 1, right? In this case, you will be getting a sum of 2, okay, if you take all the elements. But let's say you don't want to take all the elements. It's not necessary to take all elements. You can say take two elements or you can take one element. Okay, which is the maximum sub, sum subarray in this case? In this case, if we take alone three, that is better, right? That is most beneficial because if you take alone three, you will get a better sum. If you try to take any other element, right? You will not be able to get a sum of 
3. 3 is the highest sum. Now, how do we solve this problem? So, let's quickly see the code for maximum sub sub array, uh, which is done using CADNA's algorithm. So, the logic is very simple. See, if you are getting negative value, right? For example, here the sum becomes negative. 1 minus 2 is minus 1, right? Then, don't continue with this sum. Don't continue with this sum. Take the sum ignoring this, right? So, when, so you, you start traversing from the beginning, right? And at this point, your sum was initially 1. At this point, your sum becomes minus 1. So, from here on, you reset your sum back to 0. Because it is not advantageous to take your sum forward. And then, take the element forward by taking the sum as 0, right? So, let's do a dry run of this code. Okay, so let's let me quickly write down the code and then we'll try to understand it better. So the code is very simple, right? For this, the code is very simple. See, you are going to iterate over all the elements as usual. So for int i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus, right? You start your iteration. What do you do? First thing that you have to check is okay, simply let's say you declare a variable current sum, okay. Now your current sum is simply equal to you are adding the element one by one in your current sum, right? It's just array of i. First you add one, then you add the next element and so on. Okay. Whenever let's say your current sum is going to exceed the max sum, right? Which is your answer. Max sum is your answer. So whenever you are trying to exceed that, you can simply reset your max sum to current sum okay so max sum will be equal to current sum okay. now one more simple condition okay. and that condition is if your current sum becomes negative right if taking this element has made your current sum negative it is better not to take this element right in that case you can just simply reset current sum to zero that's it three line of code for Cadana's algorithm and this will work on all test cases right this is this code is simple three line code is used to find out the maximum sum subarray so let's do a dry run of this code on some other example and then we'll go back to our question okay let's say we have some element like this plus two say minus four and let's say five two something like this okay you have to find out the maximum sum subarray so initially what we'll do is we'll make our current sum variable which is okay. let's say current sum current sum is initially zero okay now we'll start with the first element so we change our current sum current sum becomes equal to zero plus one right so our current sum becomes equal to one okay now max sum is also initially zero now first time right in this case current sum becomes greater than max sum so our max sum will also become equal to 1 okay now let's go forward to the next iteration in the next iteration we think whether we should take the element 3 or not right we should include it right 1 plus 3 is 4 so we include the element and our max sum also changes and it becomes 4 okay now let's go to the next iteration we have the element minus 2 Okay, we will take it. The current sum becomes 2. It is still positive, right? It is still positive. We can still go forward by taking this continuous subarray because the current sum is still positive. Now, uh, current sum is not greater than max sum, right? So, max sum will remain 4 and you will go forward. Current sum is also not negative. So, you will simply go forward. Okay. Let's go to the next iteration. Now, in this case, 2 minus 4 is equal to minus 2, okay? Max sum will not change because of obviously minus 2 is less than 4. Now let's come to this line for the first time. Current sum is negative. So we will reset the current sum and we will make it 0. We don't want a negative sum. Unnecessarily it will never give us a better answer, right? So whenever our current sum becomes negative, we will make it 0. Simple logic. Now we will go to the next iteration. 0 plus 5 is 5. So next time max sum changes and max sum becomes equal to 5. Okay. Let's go to the next iteration. Next iteration. 5 plus 2 is 7, so your max sum is 7, right? So, in this case, your answer is 7. The maximum subarray that you can form is of these two elements, 5 plus 2, 7, and your answer is 7, okay? Now, in this case, note that if we had taken previous element, right? If we had tried to form, form a subarray including the previous element, we would have got a lesser sum because the previous element were turning our sum negative, right? It So, it is not advantageous to take the previous elements okay so in this case this is the answer 
Now let's. Uh, this is the simple code. Okay, for Cadenas algorithm. Now let's come back to our question. Okay, this was our question. Now in this question, we have to find out the maximum sum subarray. Simple. Just apply the same algorithm, Cadenas algorithm, on the same array. So let's do that and let's try to um, find out our answer. So let me just erase this and. Let's continue. So we will apply the Cadenas algorithm on this array. So initially, um, our uh, sum is negative, right? So since our sum is negative, we will not take the first element, right? So let me write current sum. Let me write max sum. Okay. So current sum is initially zero. Okay. Max sum is also zero. Now it is negative, right? So um, so current sum will change to minus one. But your current sum becomes negative. So whenever it becomes negative, we will reset it back to zero. Okay? That is Cadenas algorithm. Okay. Now let's go to the next element. Next element is zero. So your current sum will be zero plus one, which is one. Okay. Max sum will also change to one. Okay. Now in this case, we just have one more thing to note. Whenever our max sum is changing. We also have to note the left and right indices because in the question we have to return the left and right indices, right? So in this question, we will also note the left and right indices and change it in the answer variable. So we will also keep a note of that. Right now, let's run the Cadenas algorithm. So in this case, max sum is equal to 1 and current sum is also 1. Okay, now let's go forward to the next um, case. Okay, now um, uh, current sum was... Um, 1 okay and max sum is 1 now let's go to the next case next we have the element uh, 1 which corresponds to minus 1 right which corresponds to minus 1 this is our new array okay, we have converted our red colored array to this blue colored array so let me just zoom it out let's ignore that above array now in this case we have minus 1 so current sum is again back to 0 okay next case we have minus 1 current sum is negative so whenever our current sum becomes negative we will reset it back to 0 okay next we have plus 1 so current sum becomes 1 next we have plus 1 current sum becomes 2 max sum also changes to 2 next we have plus 1 current sum becomes 3 okay max sum also changes to 3 next we have minus 1 current sum is 2 next we have plus 1 right so current sum becomes equal to 3 next we have minus sum current sum becomes equal to 2 so max sum is 3 so this is your answer right this is your answer when your max sum was becoming equal to 3 at that time you got the your you got your answer okay so in this case just switching these three elements is your answer now let's go forward to coding this so in this case if you have an array of all ones in that case you have to return an empty array okay so let's first declare vector int answer that we are going to return and let us declare uh, our array of ones and uh, minus one that we are going to use so corresponding to a zero we always get a plus one corresponding to a one we always get a minus one so let's declare a vector int array on which we are going to apply the cat and a algo okay. so now we will Okay. And we will also take the size variable int n is equal to a dot size. And we can give the same size of this um, array. Now, if let's say if a of i is equal to 0, right? In that case, you have to make it plus 1, right? So, you have to make the corresponding array. Array of i will be equal to 1. Else array of i will be equal to minus 1 so that's it simple logic now uh, there's one more thing we have to return a empty array whenever we have all ones right because if you already have maximum number of ones possible why do you want to switch and get less number of ones right so in this case you have to return an empty array so for that we can declare a flag variable so let's say blue bool flag is initially equal to true okay so if we see a zero then let's say we set our flag to false. Okay. Otherwise, flag remains true. If we see all ones, right, our flag will remain true. So if our flag is true, then okay, if our flag is true, we can simply return empty array. 
so now right now answer is empty so we can simply return the empty array this will take care of the of that case okay otherwise now we have got our array we have to apply the cadena algo so let me write out write the simple cadena algorithm and then we'll make few changes in that okay so cadena algorithm is simple let us write it out okay so we have two variables uh, let's say current sum and we have max sum now in this case current sum will always be equal to will always keep on adding elements whenever current sum becomes greater than max sum in that case okay you can simply make your max sum equal to current sum okay and now if your current sum becomes negative then in that case you can reset your current sum back to zero. So this is simple cadenas algorithm. But you don't have to simply apply the algorithm. You have to also return the left and right indices, right? So how do you return that? So let us declare left, left equal to zero, right. Initially we can make this and I will also resize my answer. So I have to return the left and right indices in my vector answer. Okay. So now in this case, whenever our current sum is exceeding the max sum, we have found a new answer, right? So in this case, we will also change our answer. Okay. So in this case, what will be your right? Right will simply be whatever I you are having, right? Currently, whatever uh, index you are running at, that is the ending index. This is the thing in Cadenas algorithm. It gives the subarray ending at I, right? So your right or the ending index will be simply right. Okay. And left, okay. Left will 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 be there okay so whenever your current sum becomes negative in that case you can change your left variable right whenever your current sum turns negative in that case you don't want to you want to you know stop here right you don't want to take forward this sub array right don't take this sub array forward so in this case you have to change your left variable. So your left will become equal to i plus 1. Okay. That means try to take the next index. But don't take the current index. Right. So you, you are sort of resetting your current sum. So you have to reset your left variable also. Okay. Like like for example, let me take an example. So suppose you have, right. Suppose you have plus 1. And then you have let's say minus 1. And then you have minus 1. Okay. So in this case. And then let's say you have 1 and 1. This is suppose your uh, sub array, right? In this case, what is happening is current sum is initially 1, then it becomes 0, then it becomes minus 1. Okay, so whenever it is becoming negative, it's becoming minus 1 here. That means you don't want to go forward with these sub array because it's giving you a negative sum, right? So, so switching is costing you more, right? Like this corresponds to what? This corresponds to 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, right? This is the, in, this is the string. If you try to switch these three values, the sub array which you will get will be 1, 0, 0, right? So you are losing two ones and you are gaining only one one. So you are losing a lot more, right? You don't want to take this sub array. So you, you want to try the next sub array. So in that case, you have to switch your left also. You will try for the next index, right? So next index you will try. So your left will become equal to this. You are going to start a new sub array here. You are not going to continue with this sub array, right? You are not going to continue here. You will you'll try for the next sub array. So next time, you will keep trying from this particular index. So that's why you have to reset your left also. Now in this case, your right will be obtained here and your left, left can be reset here. So now if you have found the new answer, then you can just do that. So answer of 0 will be equal to left plus 1. Because in this case, you don't have to return the index like... It is one one indexed answer which you have to return. Like corresponding to 0, you have to return 1. Corresponding to 1, you have to return 2. So in the given question, uh, your index is shifted by 1. That is what is given in the question, right? So this is what you have to return. And finally, you can simply return answer. Finally, you can return answer. So this is a... Cadena algorithm question. Let us uh, let me try to zoom out and let me try to submit this. Let me test the code and see first of all if it is working. So it's working. Let me submit the code and see if it's working for all the test cases. So it's working. That's it. Thank you for being patient and listening.